Welcome to Type Tune Tint. I'm Tom Kranz. We will not live free. You will not. We promised God that we would endure the test of time. We promised him. A man betrayed. We will endure the test of time. Rage from the darkest places. Where does rage like that come from? It took me way out of my comfort zone. I'll ask the actor, Joe Cernio. Joe is having quite a year with a breakthrough role in the film short Loved to a new movie coming out soon and a TV pilot about to start shooting. He's been featured in magazines for his success as an entrepreneur. Now acting success is following closely behind. Today we meet Joe Cernio, coming soon to a screen near you. And welcome to this episode of Type Tune Tin, folks. And I'm joined by Joe Cernio, uh, an acquaintance of mine from another life. And now we're together in this life. And uh, Joe joins me from his palatial estate in Asbury Park, New Jersey. <laughs> Joe, how you doing, man? I'm great, Tom. How are you? Good. You are great. You've had, I just you know, was talking before we started rolling here. I think Joe has probably had the year of his life. He's had a movie short release that's that's gotten universal kudos and 40 plus awards, including best actor. He's got another movie coming out, a full length feature in uh, later this summer. He's working on a TV pilot. There's all this stuff happening. And just to think, just it was just a decade ago, Joe, you and I sat together at a conference room table at Chelsea Senior Living, where I was director of communications, and we hired your company to do our website and our SEO. Yeah. So do you still, are you yeah. still with Shoreline? Are you still, do, is that still part of your life? I am, that's, yep. That's still, uh, still my bread and butter. I, um, I, I'm kind of not in the spotlight here at Shoreline as, as much as I was, uh, we have a pretty solid team. So it kind of allows me to do all those cool things that you, uh, you had mentioned there. So you have a, so it's, it kind of qualifies as an Uber day job, I guess, basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. So basically, I just, yeah. just briefly, we, um, back in that other life, I talked about, um, Joe's company, Shoreline Media, uh, they they at the time did website development and SEO and, and um, social media and all this stuff that, you know, as a company that really wasn't, you know, we, you know, we know how to, there's a difference between posting things and knowing how that all works under the hood. Mm-hmm. And Joe and his company knows how all that stuff worked under the hood and they did great work for us. You know, the theme of this podcast is kind of creativity, people who are creative in various different ways talk to um, some musicians, artists, you're my first actor, but I did have a comedian. So had a, another kind of performer and basically where that creativity came from and how you balance your work life with your creative life, because everybody has to figure out a way to do that. So tell us, first of all, give us just a thumbnail sketch of where you're from and how you started out. You're from, you're from Jersey. Let's start there. Yep. I was born and raised in Jersey city, uh, moved to Howell, New Jersey. And uh, I think it was like 92. Um, and uh, graduated Howell High School. Never, never really got into any of the, the theater or FPAC or anything like that during uh, during high school. I kind of jumped into it right after high school. But I'm still situated in good old Asbury Park, New Jersey. And your business is based in Asbury Park too, correct? Didn't you guys? Correct. Move yeah, we have uh, we have the, our main offices are in uh, Asbury Park. We uh, a couple of years ago we we took over uh, the entire building here. So now we have uh, two floors. Main offices up top, downstairs, we have uh, training where Google comes in and, and whatnot. So you're like Jersey through and through. Um, so you said that, you know, the whole acting thing didn't hit you, I guess, until after high school. How did that, did you wake up one day and say, I want to do that? Or did it always, even as a kid, did you like play in front of the mirror? Or when did that start and how did you land there? I was always a uh, a movie buff, always. Um, my dad used to take me to um, back in... I guess around high school, there was a uh, movie theater over in uh, Lakewood, which is right next to Howell. It was like, we called it the $2 movie theater. And then in the mm-hmm. in the papers on Sunday, he used to cut out the tickets where you get a dollar off the $2 movie theater. So we basically went to the to the theater for a dollar. Um, always in the movies, renting movies. Um, it was when I saw a close friend of mine uh, after high school, two, two actually. One started um, working on The Sopranos when that started getting you know really big. I saw him and started uh, watching him in there would that and by any helped. chance be kevin interdonato kevin interdonato that's it so um, you, he's essentially a, more or less a high school friend of yours 
Yep, we uh, we were very very close in high school, and we remain very very close. We actually uh, produce a lot of projects together, so he's a producing partner as well now. But it was when I saw him um, on the role of the Sopranos. Um, he played the role of Dogsy, and um, I saw him, and I was like, "Wow, that's pretty. That's that, that's pretty cool." I've always obviously always wanted to do it. I was interested in it, and then I saw somebody else from high school. Um, I think I think he was at the time on on the cover of TV Guide for one of the soap operas. Um, and after seeing it, it was like, well, this is pretty cool. I started talking to Kevin about it and I just kind of started getting into it little by, you know, little by little. Um, and then, uh, you know, my early, early twenties, 20, 21, 22, I started going to a lot of, uh, acting classes, meeting a lot of people in, uh, in New York and kind of taking it from there. Well, and I, I had just happened to have your resume in front of me here. I, of course, at the time when we were working together, you know, when we were doing the Chelsea thing, I had absolutely no idea that this was part of your life. And I only mm -hmm. found kind of got clues when I saw an occasional post of a photograph at a film festival or this. And then after I left, of course, things kind of took off. But uh, I see here that you worked on two daytime dramas. You worked on um uh, all my children and as the world turns uh, significant uh, you had some significant stints there right uh as the world turns was my first um i did a lot of background for about a year and while i was on that show it was all just basic background type type work but while i was on that show uh, a friend of mine was like hey you know I'm, i just auditioned for all my children and blah 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 i can get you in or whatever the case is and back then I was 20, I was 20, 20, 21 at the time. I'll be, I'll be 43 now. Um, but back then was those days where you had a headshot and resume and you just walked into the casting office, just dropping down on the desk and and that was it. So I had found out um, who to speak to or who to give my info to. And um, it was a gentleman over the, by the name of Bob Lambert, who I auditioned for uh, two or three times until I actually finally stopped working on as the world turns and went over to all my children starting with more background and whatnot and then eventually leading up to under five and then principal and, and whatever else so i wound up staying on that show for probably close to maybe 30 30 plus episodes so all my children would have been your first i guess for lack of a better term real role like a real kind of semi-starring or, or lead role where yeah you it wasn't lines and you had an actual part in the in the story Correct. Yeah, it was uh, played an orderly on the show. And um, for anyone that knows um, Vincent Irizarry, another friend of mine, was a phenomenal, phenomenal actor. Um, a lot of my stuff was in Pine Valley Hospital with with uh, Vincent. So, yeah, it was my first kind of role, kind of, first kind of speaking. And then from there, I just, you know, met a lot of people that helped me out, but started auditioning a lot more for for other type stuff. And then basically as the daytime was doing really really well and i was i was getting a lot of gigs that's when i got really 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 into uh indie film you've got tons of photographs and headshots i i will say that the camera likes you joe that's what we used to <laughs> say in tv it's like you know i don't think there's a bad photograph of you that exists i you know and i Maybe haven't seen last. every photograph of you and you might dispute that but uh, maybe the you know, last film maybe well that. you know you you're a good looking guy and and you've uh in the last couple of years you made a couple of big magazine covers uh I guess it was LA Weekly right uh and at least one other Matt was at Swagger magazine these they did Swagger, stories yeah. about you not not necessarily as a film person although I guess Swagger will but they talked about you as an entrepreneur as like uh you know a successful independent business guy and how I mean, when yeah just going going back to what you had mentioned it's it's like you put your mind to it you'd really 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 focus and when I first started Shoreline it was because I wasn't making a ton of money you know the soap operas at the time had you know they they they, they came and they left I had a couple other gigs here and there um but really wasn't putting my mind to it like I like I should have been and after a while obviously if you don't start working people do forget about you and uh, yeah. I did a couple of magazine covers here and there and then and then slowly got into building <laughs> building websites and whatnot and um I saw the potential that it had and I just kind of built it up from there did you just were you interested in that as a just as a as a, I mean, why did you pick that particular business to go into I was I was um you I was interested interest in that subject matter I actually graduated uh I wound up getting two degrees at the at the Chubb Institute um, when I was younger. So I've always been into the the networking type, computer type stuff. Gotcha. Website stuff was was brand new at the time. It was up and coming, you know. So 
when front page was out there and, and whatnot when you used to build websites with front page. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, right. So so it was um yeah, that's it's it's kind of how I got into it. And knowing what it the potential that it had, I just kind of kind of ran with it. So for the first, you know, we've been we've been here 14 years now, Shoreline. Um, but let's just say for the first, you know, 10, I'm I'm sitting there working seven, seven days a week and and you know, powering through it. And and like like I said, you put your mind to it and you keep working, you build it up. And now well, how it's, how big is the company up. now? Like how many employees do you have? And you have a lot of clients. Yeah, we have we have the client base is a is a big client base. We have um probably about 12 employees here right now. Okay. Um we have clients from you know Jersey, New York, West Coast, um, Australia, New Zealand. Um, yeah, we have a quite quite a few. And and we concentrate in all all types of industries, home services, healthcare, pest control. Sure. Um so yeah, it works uh it works well. Great. All right. Let's talk about loved. Okay. So this is a 10, it's like a 13 minute, I guess, right? 13, 14 minute film short that currently has been making the rounds at film festivals around the world. Is it still doing that? Are they still showing them? That's going to happen for the rest of the year, pretty much, you think? Yeah, we're we're in um we're in festivals throughout, like going into 2024. Okay. Yeah, which is the kind of the way that we we marketed it. We did it that way on purpose. So you did that. So do you see this film ever making any kind of release? to the general world so that like you know real photo real people can actually see it i think so so lo long story kind of short was um it was um i was i had just did a feature because i only started really really getting back into the to the acting stuff a, a, a few years ago but i just got off a feature um modern day gangster film loved it it was great it was with kevin Tudonato. we produced it um it was his feature he directed it he wrote it and a phenomenal phenomenal movie um myself uh frankie Yeager, uh roger matthews malik whitfield there's a ton of guys in it it was it was a great project and and that's the bastard it. sons right yep the bastard sons we'll get more into we that got... a little bit later but keep going sorry no sorry right. and when we got yeah when when that ended it was as, as great as it was it I still wanted to do something something different because I was getting that typecast as like just your you know everyday average Joe, which is to totally fine. So I had seen a friend of mine who was on Ozark um, perform an absolutely amazing scene. I got, I got in touch with a fr another friend of mine. I said, "Hey, do you think you can write a monologue for me?" And that's where basically love love came from. So it started really? as, a, as a it started as a monologue based off something I saw on, on television, and then as we as we got got into it, I said, "Man, we can we can really you know make this something something big." And I said, "This could be something for me, like a breakout type role, which which is what I want to do. I want to do this type of stuff. Plus, I've never studied method acting before, and I always wanted to wanted to kind of give it a, give it a shot, give it a go." And um, and that's and that's basically what we did. Uh, we filmed it as we filmed it kind of two ways. We did want to submit it to the festivals. We wanted to see what we could do because we went all out as far as production value and and cinematography and and acting and, and whatever else. Um, but we filmed it as a technically as a pilot. And then what what you saw is the short version. That way we can get it into festivals and see what it could do. Little did we know that it was going to yeah bring us all over the all over the world now. But yeah, so um, so if you go on on uh, on the Facebook page and look it up, you'll see that it's been at uh, at least I mean I lost count fifty or so festivals. You've won best actor, best cinematography, best short film, best thriller, uh, and we're going to show a clip in in just a minute here. Just uh, so it's called Loved, not to be confused with the 1997 film Loved, which is the first <laughs> thing that came up when I Googled it. Really yeah, pissed it me off, it actually. Is. But no, this is a film that it's not available to the general public yet, but I'm going to show you folks a good chunk of the trailer here. The basic, it's a really simple story. It's about a working guy named Harold who basically finds out his wife's having an affair, and this launches a rage in him that basically uh it it injects attention into this 13 minute film that builds and builds and builds to a climax no spoilers here i'll just say that the guy you're looking at right now is the same guy you're about to see in these clips so folks without further ado here's a, a clip or two from the short film loved i will kill you Get down! Oh, Get out! Oh, no. Stop! He didn't do anything! Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Tell me! What did he have that I did? Ah, 
I got to tell you, when I saw that, it was like I had to just remember where you where I was with you a few years ago. Yeah, that's the same guy. How do you possibly get, you know, tuned up to do that? That was um, part of what I love so much about about this project is because it it took me it took me way out of my comfort zone. And for years, there were multiple people telling me, even my even acting coaches was like, you know, you, you have it. You just got to get out of your comfort zone. Get yeah, you're the guy right now. You're the guy sitting across from me at that table. You're you know, you're speaking in a normal voice. You're an average. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a nice, nice young man. And there you are. There's this crazed guy. So did you have to teach yourself that? Did you do one million takes or how did that work? It was definitely it was it was a lot of takes. But as far as the, the character development goes, it was a lot of method type acting, which I've never, never done before studied Meisner before it was okay I, I did use a lot of what I learned uh, Bob McAndrew was the coach did take a lot of what I learned from him but then from from there um I legit went out into the desert alone by myself and just did what I had to do to get to get into it and and we got we got it done it was it was several takes I think the first day was um right around 17 and a half hours total total Yikes. shoot that we shot um, and where was that where was it filmed did i see joshua park is that where you, you filmed that we filmed the entire project in joshua tree yep right yeah. and uh and you know, joshua tree so the, the entire 14 it's such a compact little package because every single shot is a winner right yeah. and every single and you know the way you kind of promoted it as a way of promoting yourselves for horsepower which we'll talk about in a minute you know, it's kind of an example of everything that that goes into a production and everything that has to go in the organization, the cinematography, the editing is phenomenal. Obviously, the acting is outstanding. Even the two actors who played your your, your wife and her lover, they oh, were great. Well, yeah. You know, yeah. it was short and sweet, but they, you know, the the woman uh, whose name escapes me, what's your act, the actress? Uh, Debbie Gerber. Yeah, I mean, she, I bought her totally as being scared shitless, you know, and afraid okay, to die. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I can see where that's like almost like a little clinic on filmmaking. Um, speaking of filmmaking, you've got, as we mentioned, another project coming out this summer, and you're about to launch into a TV pilot. And uh, we will talk more about that in just a moment after I do some shameless self-promotion. More in a minute with Joe Cernio. Folks, stay there. It's time to grab your beach reading. Your great escape is waiting at TomCransBooks.com. Contemporary fiction in the Bud and Maggie series, sci-fi adventure in the Earth Moon Rescue series. Visit TomCransBooks.com for detailed descriptions and links to the ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook editions. That's TomCransBooks.com. You deserve a great escape. And we're back, folks, with Joe Cernio from Asbury Park. And uh, we spent some time talking about love, and I showed you some clips. I didn't realize that you had actually done The Bastard Sons before Loved. So you did that movie first. And that's a movie that's actually finished, and it's coming out um, later in the summer of, we believe, the summer of 2023. And, uh, I mean, uh, the one-line summary I have out of it, it's essentially a mob movie, kind of a mobish movie about a, an underworld family who's out to get somebody give me make make me correct. Yeah, modern modern day gangster film is basically basically what it is um we had a couple of good reviews modern day gangster film jersey's been waiting for and, and, yeah. and so it's a yeah it's a it, we wanted to go like the old school route like the old school gangster type type films just modern day type um but yeah it's this little little crew of guys basically that that go and take down one of the one of the bosses here you are in uh prime mob regalia uh, and here's a little here's a little clip of uh, Joe. what's the name of your character in the movie? In Bastard Sons, my character is Dobson. All right, here's uh, Joe Cernio as Dobson. Us not having revenue, it's just not an option. Us going on like we have been, it's not an option either. Mm -hmm. Being that we're loyal to our connects upstate, we just never did it. 
Now the product's getting hot. And they're in desperate need for someone to push it. People, look, such a nice boy. Can you believe me? There's <laughs> not two guys here. Uh, so that must have been fun to do. And, and I guess doing a real, a whole movie is very different than doing a short, obviously more of everything. And what was it like working with, you know, a kid you knew since high school and doing like your first full length film? Oh, it's great. Uh, him, him and I together, uh, we work very, very well together. We did, we did a couple of features back in the day together. Um, but this this was this was a lot more fun because it was it was more personal. Um, you know, we had helped. Uh, I had helped produce it as he was writing. Him and I were going back and forth. But for him, for what he took on to create this entire feature was 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 great. Phenomenal job by by Kev, and it made it made it really easy. Um, so this was it. his brainchild. He did he write it and he did everything. Yeah, he wrote. He directed it, and the way he wrote it was you know basically we all got on set and it was it was you know don't don't act you know just just be yourselves he wrote these characters based on myself and frankie and roger and everybody so he else knew you guys and he wrote them for you essentially yep yep so it was very natural um it worked really really well um and it played into the storyline really really well and and from what i uh, you know we, we saw it a couple of times with with special screenings and whatnot and uh so i think people are gonna enjoy it it's a cool cool uh cool movie where will do we do you know yet where we will see this film not yet it's going to be on um one of the major platforms we're not we're not sure yet okay um and we're trying to you know with everything going on right now with the unions and whatnot uh we're hoping that we that we get it out either end of this month or next month uh, another exciting project you've got uh, a tv pilot uh so this the pilot is called horsepower there's no video yet because you haven't actually filmed anything yet um, but you have a cast and you play uh some guy running for governor I guess that I see uh, <laughs> yeah he is governor yeah. I'm not sure tell us a little bit about what horsepower is so loved actually loved started as a pilot and we filmed we filmed an ending so that way we can create it as a short and submit it to festivals this has always been been a full pilot which we're going to push as a pilot not a short film um but it was just an idea. I, I love Westerns. Absolutely love them. Um, we didn't really want to get into the pre-production and crazy enough craziness of, of, of an actual, you know, dated type piece in the 1800s type Western. So we went modern day. Um, so the writer friend of mine who also wrote Love, DJ Higgins, he um, he came in and, and we him and I started planning and, and organizing. He wound up going in writing this this pilot script um yeah about basically a, a you know very powerful um politician who's running for governor um gets into a, a, a little accident tries to hide that little accident and yeah, right. a few months later that that past kind of catches up to him um but he's given an ultimatum on um basically you know keeping things quiet or or spending the rest of his life in, in jail, basically. Right. So. Your website describes this as a cross between Yellowstone, Natural Born Killers, and Banshee. Banshee so yeah. you guys have once again gone for the grit, right? Yeah. Not, we went, it doesn't sound like yeah. a gentle love story. It looks like we're, we're for, yeah, we're real family, family like pilots. I love that. And so a pilot, just you know, clear us up on this. This is like essentially a proposed television series. That's what a pilot is, correct? Correct. We shoot the we shoot the pilot. We have a pitch deck, and we have up to about six episodes written. Um, even characters that a network or something may want to see, rather than you know, rather than seeing no names or whatever. Um, but yeah, we have the pitch deck. We we submit the pilot, and then we have everything written to to the point where like, hey, here's what we want to see happen in this in this season, and then we pitch it to you know whoever we may you, think. You hope that somebody will come along and then produce this series and pay you shitloads of money. Pick, pick it up um you know or or continue to allow us to produce it and create it which right. is obviously what we would love to do um yeah. but we got some um we got some names in 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 this one um it stars my, myself Erin O'Brien <clears throat> Peter Dobson um Robert Dobby who I'm sure you know um Malik Whitfield, Gary Cairns, a, a few few other guys, but uh, there's some so familiar some faces. faces we'll recognize when we see. Oh yeah, them. absolutely, absolutely. And so that what's kind of the timetable? So are you going to start shooting this this in the summer of 2023 or later? Or we, I actually just um, just got back. I've been doing a lot of uh, training uh, mm -hmm. for for horseback riding and whatnot. Oh my! Um, yeah, we're doing we're doing that, and we're sh shooting starts August eighth, and so. Uh, 
Okay. So then the process is you think it takes the rest of the year to finish it pretty much or not? We'll probably have it edited or start to edit right after we start shooting. And let's just give or take, you know, maybe a month or two months to kind of get everything where we need to get it and then start, you know, pitching it where we want to pitch it. Is your do you have an end game here that sees you as doing acting as your full time life and leaving kind of the other part of your life, you know, maybe, maybe you're a stakeholder in shoreline, but maybe somebody else takes it over while you start, you know, collect your Oscars. It's always been, yeah, it's always been that that's always been the kind of goal. Um, I just saw the potential and what we could create here and not making any money with, with the acting when I was younger, it's, it's just like, all right, what am I going to do? You know? So that's where, where shoreline came in. Um, by me doing this, it's allowing me to produce my own my own projects because sure. Loved and Horsepower, you know, I'm, I'm producing and executive producing. Once Horsepower is done, it, I'm going to do a very big push to see where we can where we can get it. Who wants to you know create it? Who wants to pick it up? Um, but focus more on on the acting when I'm when I'm done with uh, when I'm done with this. But it was also kind of like my coming back type uh, type role too with, and, with Love and, and Horsepower. So and by executive producing, is that the same as you're financing it? Correct. Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. So you have, well, a, you and, have a real then, stake in this, right? A financial stake in this as well. Oh yeah. This one's um this one's much, much. I mean, not that loved was small by any means. I mean, we all went to Joshua Tree and we had a uh Troy Ruff um from uh from Fresno. He he's the studio kind of to kind of came out. film giant pictures came out from Fresno to to Joshua Tree using the same crew on horsepower. Hmm. Uh, but this time we're traveling to this little area in Colorado called Cortez, mm. um, which no airport, no anything. So there's a little community airport that's there and whatnot. So a lot of us are driving um, some, you know, some flying, but we're shooting on an absolutely gorgeous uh, ranch, working ranch called uh, Canyon of the Ancients wow. uh, ranch, guest ranch. And it sits on 2000 acres of ancient ruins which makes the backdrop even even better than what I had. Oh, yeah, great scene. Yeah, very, very cool. So we start filming August 8th on that. Oh, good for you. I just hope that it's not as hot then as it is now in that part of the country because it has sucked. It was 111 last yeah. year. Yeah, yikes. Yeah. I know, take a lot of water and, and tents and stuff, right? And some fans. Oh, yeah. yep. Well, we'll look forward to seeing both uh, The Bastard Sons uh, later this summer and maybe sometime next year or late this year. Uh, a horsepower, if that's the name that it keeps, uh, I, you know, we will assume it that it is. Joe, I really appreciate you taking the time. I wish you all the best and continued success. And uh, we'll check in with you again uh, when you reach the yes, top absolutely. or near the top. Absolutely, Tom. Thank you. Pleasure seeing you again, man.